Howdy y'all, it's Chris with Shell Fitness. Today we're going to be talking about total daily energy expenditure, which is essentially calories in versus calories out, and how it's not that simple. We're going to go over the equation and how you can find out how many calories you need on days you're working out and you're not working out. So this is pretty cool because as a trainer who goes through our internship in West Hollywood, you're going to be able to calculate this and do nutritional consulting with your clients. People are going to try to make you go on a diet or this is good for you, this is not good for you when it comes to food and that's not what we do here. We educate you on the quantity of food first and then we will talk about quality. So it's, you get a lot of comments, people will get upset saying well, quality of, of food is so important, which it is, but the first thing that we need to address in the nation today being overweight and obese is the quantity, so how much we're consuming and that's going to be the total daily energy expenditure equation. So the equation is your BMR, which is basal metabolic rate. You multiply that by your activity factor. And then you add in your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is NEAT. And then your thermal effect of food, which is burning calories, the, the amount of calories that you burn from eating certain foods. So that's why calories in and calories out isn't 100% accurate because we got to factor in the type of food. So what I mean by that is, 100 calories of broccoli is different than 100 calories of uh, Twinkies versus 100 calories of protein. So the body will burn more f calories consuming more fiber and protein. So let's, let's break down the equation starting with BMR. Again, basal metabolic rate. So basal is your baseline, your metabolism. So this is about 70% of the fuel that we burn and it's going to be the number one organ that takes the most calories. See if you know what it is. Five, four, three. Two, one, ah, liver. 27% of your daily intake is going to go to maintaining this sucker right here. Your liver starts over here to your big organ. Second, I know you want to go with muscle, but it's not. Brain, almost 20%. Muscle's number three at 18. You have your kidneys, which are on the back side here. I'll show you on the scale. Your kidneys are right here. Two of them. One's a little higher, and then on top of those, you have the adrenal glands. And then we have your heart, other organs, about 19%. So that's the 70% of our fuel is going to maintaining those. Notice how insignificant muscles, we'll talk about that in another post. Again, 60 to 70%. After the age of about 20, we lose 1 to 2% of our BMR due to a loss of lean muscle mass, which is going to be muscle, obviously. So what happens is we're not as active when we start putting on adipose tissue, and so our BMR begins to slowly decline. Activity factor, which is really important, about 20% of our total intake or total energy is gonna come from activity. Now, this is where we get in trouble. If you use apps, they give us too many calories. As a nation, we're consuming too much. 2,700 calories on average, that's significant. So we have, I don't even give a sedentary factor. So you take your BMR, which is your basal metabolic rate, and we're going we're gonna to go through the whole uh, equation. So for males, you're going to take your weight times it by 10. Females, you take your weight times it by 9. Then you're going to multiply it by how hard you're working out, which is really important. So it's duration and intensity, not just about the type of exercise. It's how long you're doing it. I do not consider cardio exercise. It is, but I don't factor it in on these, unless you're you know, a marathon runner or cross country. And this is just... Um, what we've learned throughout the years of doing this for a long time is that when you give people a higher multiplier, they're not losing weight that they like to. So I'm all about the mindset and focusing on dis distinguishing physiological hunger versus psychological hunger, which is really important. So if you're working out one to three days, we give you a multiplier of 1.375. Three to five days, 1.55. Five to six days, 1.725. Double days, 1.9. And professional athletes, two, two plus. I've worked with some athletes who so I've given a multiplier of almost four. So generally, you, you're going to be here at 1.375. Students that are going through our internship, I give them 1.375. You've got to earn the higher activity factor. And as a nation, we overestimate how hard we exercise, about, about 50%. And we underestimate how much we eat, almost close to 50%. So let's fine tune our quantity, how much we're consuming, and then you can make small adaptations as you learn your body better. Non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which is neat, simply just moving more throughout the day, walking at break, during lunch, half hour eating, half hour walking. 
right when you get home, the number one excuse people use for why they don't exercise, I'm tired. So have your workout shoes in your car, right when you get home, put them on, walk around the block two or three times. Movement is gonna get the brain thinking. When we sit down, start flipping through your phone, that's where complacency takes in. And then it's so easy just to say, I'll work out tomorrow. You gotta move. So non-exercise activity thermogenesis is super important. And it's, it is a pretty large factor in the sense it's, it's, it's overlooked. People don't think about it. You can, just by walking an extra 20, 30 minutes a day, do that five days in a week. In the course of the year, you're gonna probably lose five to 10 pounds. Let me grab something real quick. Just by walking 30 minutes a day in the course of a year, you can lose a couple of these. This is five pounds of fat, that's significant. Those are the little victories that are gonna help you be successful long term. And last but not least is thermal effect of food, which is thermogenesis. So your body heating up, heating itself up to burn calories. So if I just, as a nation, we're consuming about 50 to 60% of our diet and carbohydrates. Carbs aren't bad, let's not lambaste them, but there, it doesn't take as much to break down. If you're eating chips, tortillas, breads, I know we get all obsessed with, oh, they're high in fiber. That's like two or three grams of fiber, it's not that hot. Fiber does have a higher thermal effect of food, which is 30%, so does protein. But on average, you're looking at about 10% of thermogenesis. You can change that in your favor and burn more calories by consuming more proteins, whether it's animal product or not, and then also fiber, so that's significant. So the two suggestions that we give to our clients to show up fitness when they wanna start working on their diet, I'm gonna tell them to track their food for a week. Once they've done that, it usually takes about two months. Then we'll start talking about the quality of the food. People are so afraid to track their food because, as we say over here, they're under-reporting. And so it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. So where was I going with that? 30% protein, 30% fiber. You can change that in your favor by consuming fibrous foods such as broccoli, cauliflower, and also consuming more protein. So protein and water, those are the two things that we suggest for people. So again, the equation is BMR times activity factor, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, and then your thermal effect of food. So let's actually go through an equation and I can show you how people screw this up so much. Let's take a female who weighs 150 pounds. You take 150, you times it by nine. 1350. So on days that she's not working out, I'm gonna suggest for her to consume 1200 calories. I cannot, because I'm not a registered dietitian, I cannot tell anyone to go below 1200 calories. Some of these equations, they might be lower than that. I'm still gonna say, Work with 1200, go and talk with your dietitian. Dietitians are not doctors, remember, most doctors only have like maybe three hours of schooling through their med school, not much at all. Dietitians are the one you want to work with. Everyone can call themselves a nutritionist, so you know, dig a little deeper into their, their qualifications. So a non-workout day, 1200 calories. Imagine if you were consuming 2700 and now you start eating 12. That's significant. You're gonna take away half, 50% of your food intake you're gonna be tired mentally, you're not gonna be able to probably stomach it, and then what's gonna happen is you're gonna binge. So that's why a food log is really important. We can't just give statistics and say, you should, anyone who's 150 pounds and you wanna lose weight, you should be getting 1200 calories. There's more to it, and that's why at consultation, you sit down and review a few food log, energy levels, your sleep, your stress, those are really, really important factors that we need to uh, take into consideration. So then what we do, an online app is gonna give this person a multiplier of 1.2. That's why I don't like that. I don't care that, you know, again, we are a sedentary nation. We're not moving nearly as much, but the calculators are going to give you a few times uh, 1350 by 1 1.2, <clears throat> you're going to get almost 1,700 calories. You go to deficit, you go to, you know, 16. That person is eating more than they probably deserve. Learn physiological hunger, like I'm actually hungry, <clears throat> and you'll learn that by not eating for two or three days versus psychological hunger. Oh, it's 12 o'clock, I should eat. Habits. We gotta change those habits. So on a workout day, I'm gonna take their BMR, which is 1350, and I'm gonna times it by, if she's working out uh, five or six days in the week, I'm gonna give her a multiplier of 1.55, which is two, uh, 2,090 calories. That's to maintain your weight of 150 pounds. If she wants to lose weight, we need to be in a deficit. So I'm gonna suggest 1,800 calories. So get excited about that. Work out six times a week, lifting weights, two different splits, a push, a pull, a hinge, a squat, full body, walk every day, list, low intense steady state, do one day of hit, exercise five, six times a week, and you're earning 1,800 calories. Your body's gonna get stronger, you're gonna have more muscle mass, energy levels are gonna go up, testosterone's gonna break down more fat, everyone wants more energy, and you're gonna get that by lifting weights. 
But we do it is we, we chase the cool, fun classes, orange theory, whatever it may be, and you're doing a ton of cardio. Yes, it is high intense, but you're not burning and breaking down optimally. So if you really want this equation to work in your favor, start lifting weights five to six times a week. Give yourself a multiplier. Always go less than what you think you deserve. So what I mean by that is if you're working out five to six days in a week, on paper this multiplier is 1.725. Do not give yourself that. You have to earn that. Go to 1.55 or 1.375. Get, accept the lower number. Don't get frustrated at it. I only can have 1,500 calories. Ask yourself, are you happy with your physique? Do not blame it on your metabolism. Don't point to, oh, I have a thyroid problem, unless you've been diagnosed by a doctor. Don't land base Western medicine. All we want to do is give people uh, pills and blah, 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 blah. Ask yourself, are you really exercising hard? Are you showing up regularly? Are you being mindful of what you're consuming or do you just eat whatever, whenever because you're stressed out because you're not sleeping enough? My bet is that. So going over the total daily energy expenditure to summarize, there's four parts. Your basal metabolic rate, which is your BMR, 70% of your total calories. Activity factor, roughly 20%. There's different multipliers that you need to earn. Walking, running for 20, 30 minutes, I don't consider that a higher multiplier. Neat, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, walking, getting to work and, and doing a plank for 30 seconds. When you go to the bathroom, do some jumping jacks. At break, walk. When you get home, put those shoes on, go for a walk. Thermal effect of food, 30% for protein, 30% for fiber. You will burn more calories by consuming those macronutrients. Macronutrients, carbs, fats, and protein. Protein will burn more calories. Here she is. Make sure to follow us, like us, comment if you have any questions. I will send you your own personalized workout day, non-workout day equation if you send us an email, chris at shellfitness.com. Have a great day.